Welcome to a new video. Today we'll be reviewing five undervalued stocks that I think would be very attractive to actually do a deeper dive for May 2024. So the first one on the list is Apple Inc, ticker symbol AAPL. And of course, you all know this company, we all do. It's in the technology industry. And all right, we know this company is not growing like it used to. However, over the past year, it has remained flat and is down from its all-time highs close to $200, now sitting at 165. Now, this company pays a 1.6% dividend yield, which is one of the highest dividend yields it has had in the past four years, where although the dividend is not significant and it's only a 1.6% dividend yield, they have been growing this dividend at a 8.7% compounded annual growth rate for the past three years, which is a significant growth rate, especially for such a stable company like Apple. Now, their valuation ratios have actually been sitting pretty stable for the past year. Of course, this doesn't represent the current price drop that the stock has suffered. But in theory, the company right now is trading at below 27 PE ratio. But let's not forget that this company, although it's not growing like it used to, it still has incredible margins. Its revenue and income are staying very consistent and it has crazy cash flows. So for example, we can see that Q1 of 2024 has been the best quarter in the past year, generating revenues of $120 billion with incredibly stable margins of a gross margin of around 45% and a net margin of higher than 27%. So though this company may have lower growth rates than previously, it still has that incredible moat and ecosystem that it has created over the years. Now, when looking at their cash flow evolution, this is just beautiful. Every single quarter, they're generating over 20 billion and even higher as last quarter was 40 billion in free cash flow, which they're using to, first of all, buy back stock because Apple conducts big share buybacks, paying dividends and reinvesting back into the business. And when looking at their leverage, this company is in a very solid financial position. As you can see, their assets are above their total liabilities. Now, second on the list is Tesla, ticker symbol TSLA. We all know this company again. Some people consider it in the automotive industry. Some people say it's a technology company. Although I'm not a big fan of this company, since even though it has returned negative 10% in the past year, I still think that this is an overvalued company. However, let's take a look. Now, first, we have to consider that Tesla pays no dividends. It reinvests every single cent that it makes back into the business. And when we look at its valuation ratios, we can see that its price to earnings ratio in quarter four 2023 was actually around 60 times earnings, which is, for me, not an attractive valuation for a company that has not been growing as fast as it used to recently. However, this could be a very speculative play because this company has been trading at even higher valuations as we can see from the chart. Now, it is true that this company is very consistent and although it hasn't been making profits for a long time, right now it's focusing on getting that profit consistency. As we can see, their revenues have been fairly consistent for the past four quarters with a very solid gross profit and a net income that boomed last quarter due to some income that was not categorized as selling cars, maybe selling some long-term assets. I believe that this is one of the most innovative companies in the world and that it has actually revolutionized the industry. However, a 60p ratio for a company that is stagnant in the revenue, gross profit and net income is a bit worrying for me. Now, we do have to give props to them because they're doing this in an ecosystem which is not very favorable for automotive companies and their free cash flows are staying extremely consistent, which is something very tough for a company like Tesla. And additionally, they have a very stable financial position with their total assets being higher than double that of their total liabilities. So although they are trading at a, a bit of an expensive valuation in terms of PE ratios, in terms of relative valuation, they're trading at a very attractive valuation and their financials look solid. Third one on the list is Vici Properties, ticker symbol Vici, which is a rate which focuses on the entertainment sector. So what is this? Well, they buy casinos, hotels, and other entertainment facilities, mainly in Las Vegas. And as we can see, this stock has returned a negative 16% over the past year, which I believe has mainly been driven by higher interest rates. Now, this company has been trading at a fairly low valuation for the past year, because of this drop in prices that we have been seeing for the past year. Right now, they're trading at a price to earnings ratio, which is around 13 times, according to TradingView, with a price to cash flow ratio of 16 times, 
Now they pay a very substantial dividend with a dividend yield of 5.9%. However, one thing to consider is that this dividend has not been growing since 2021. Instead, it has actually contracted at a 1.2% compounded annual growth rate for the past three years. However, this company generates such substantial free cash flows and is able to pay such high dividend yields, which make it a very attractive company. In terms of revenue and income evolution, this company has extremely stable revenues since their revenues are basically the rent that they get. And the only way to increase this is if you increase the rent payments or if you acquire more buildings and rent them out, which is the two growth strategies that they have in place right now. Now, this company has very solid margins, but this is because it's a rate and it doesn't have cost of goods sold. Instead, it just keeps that on the balance sheet as liabilities. Now, we can see that their cash flow is ridiculously consistent, which is something that makes this company extremely attractive. And they have a very solid financial position with their assets being extremely high in comparison to their liabilities. However, you should do some deeper research on this and check out, for example, their interest coverage ratio and other metrics for the long run, especially focusing on interest rates. Number four on the list is a bit of a speculative play. This is Perion Networks, ticker symbol PERI, which is a digital advertising industry. Now it is down 71% in the last year, and the last drop was caused by a readjustment of the revenues, decreasing them because I believe they'll be losing a partnership that they had with Microsoft. I believe this partnership was around 50% of the revenue, and now that is being priced into the stock. Now, as we can see, their valuation ratios, they have been decreasing, and this stock has been becoming more attractive quarter after quarter, with the last quarter, quarter 1 2024, not being available yet on TradingView right now. Now, this company doesn't pay any dividends, so it doesn't have a dividend compounded annual growth rate. However, when we look at the revenues income evolution, we can see that their total revenue had actually been growing at a pretty fast pace for the past quarters, with of course there being a contraction in quarter 1 2024, which we haven't been able to get more information because this is all that is available on TradingView. However, their gross profit and their net income was growing accordingly to their revenue with very solid margins as you can see down below, with a net margin of 17%, which is higher than the thresholds we usually look for. Now their cash flows are looking very solid. This company recently, of course, announced a stock buyback program and they actually increased it to around $75 million, I believe, over 2024. And when looking at their leverage evolution, their total assets more than cover their total liabilities, sitting at three times their total liabilities. So this is a very speculative play, which I, I will actually be doing a deep dive because maybe the market has overreacted over their loss of partnership with Microsoft. And last but not least, a company I have been following for the longest time, Semler Scientific, ticker symbol SMLR. This is a play on the medical devices industry. And as you can see, over the past year, it has it is down 3% with crazy moves as the stock reached over $50 per share earlier in 2024. Now, this stock does not pay dividends. And as we can see, their valuations actually got extremely expensive in quarter 4, 2023. However, now they're trading at just under 10 PE ratio, which I believe is a very attractive valuation for a company like Semler. Now, it is true that the revenue and income evolution is not looking very positive for the past quarters. However, when you look at 2022, the growth that this company has created in one year is incredible. Their margins have contracted a bit, but Semler says that this is due to the cyclicality of the industry where hospitals and other of their clients actually buy a lot of devices in the first quarter and then sell them and stop hiring the services in the fourth quarter. Now when looking at the cash flow evolution we can see that it is a bit inconsistent and all over the place that is why I'm waiting on this stock to actually clear out on the next quarterly report. Now their leverage evolution is actually looking extremely neat as this company operates without almost any liabilities. And one red flag that I do know from this company, which is why we need to do further research, is that around 70% of the revenues come from two of their largest clients. So although this is really good as this is a very small cap company, we should be keeping an eye on those ratios. Now, thank you for watching. As always, this has been the Cashflow Compounder. Join the free Patreon for extra content. And there is a link in bio for a free stock if you join Trader Republic or Trading212.